Hi everyone and welcome to April. Uh, we've got a brand new playlist on the YouTube channel which is called simply Things to Paint in April and it's every YouTube tutorial we've ever created in the month of April all in one place for you so if you're struggling for something seasonal to paint head over there or of course just watch on because we are in April and today we're going to paint some gorgeous spring lambs because uh, where we live they are everywhere and we can definitely hear them. We might even hear some outside the, the window today on filming. Um, anyway, grab your paints and let's get started. Painting spring lambs feels very relevant to um, getting my book out because the year of watercolour um, tracks the seasons and the spring lambs just happen to fall in the book as well as today um, and what's nice is we do a little like sketchy version as well as a, a full-on painting version but yeah it's um I mean I'm always inspired by the changing seasons anyway but it was so nice to put it all in a book um, we got some wild garlic in our veg box this morning so um, yeah there's loads going on obviously the bluebells are going to start coming out soon but if you really love working to a seasonal um, pattern then you should definitely check out this book because it is a wonderful way that you can just feel really connected with nature um, and enjoy painting it as well. So anyway, today we're going to do a sort of slightly alternative version of this. Um, we're not going to do a, a U, we're just going to do a little lamb and we'll do a little group of them. So goodbye for now, a year of watercolour and we're going to get started. So I have got a sort of, it's about a five and a half by a seven and a half inch piece of paper. And I am going to get started with just an HB pencil and we're going to do some drawing first. So as with all animals, um, I always start with breaking the body down into shapes. So I'm going to start with the torso, a little sort of potato shape and then a slightly smaller one for the back haunches, just slightly smaller. Now, because a lamb is a, a baby sheep, it means that the proportion of the body is not quite there yet as it grows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just connect that with a little curve and connect the back like that with a little curve. And then the legs, are going to come down from here basically and then another one from from there and the legs are going to sort of feel just that bigger and bigger and longer than maybe they should and that's because the rest of the body is kind of catching up we might just have one sort of you know lambs aren't aren't known for standing still very much unless they're with their mums. Um, they love to spring about, don't they? So from the back, the leg sort of angles backwards like that, and then down it goes. And they have these lovely big little hooves and fuzzy woolly backs of their legs that are gonna come up there. And we'll do another one just coming in the back there. Then off the back, we'll have a little tail like that and then for the front for the head we're going to create a sort of uh, an oval shape and if it said an oval shape I mean basically just half the bottom half of an oval so a U shape really isn't it and then we're going to place a curve over the top and then some lovely lovely ears which also just feel a bit big for them at this point. And, and that's really the basics. And then what I like to do is just sort of pad out the body just a little bit and get a bit of that texture on there. And then f to get the eyes, I find what's quite good is to sort of extend the line from the ears curve in there and they always look a bit sort of a little bit evil at this point but this is um the best way to 
capture the eyes like that and then right down at the bottom a little sort of dash two dashes like that and then just sort of a little a little curve and there we've got a rather sweet little lamb now I've just given that a slight knock back with the pencil and I'm going to do one that's more straight on so this time the torso is the only circle we really see and from that we can get our legs so again the big old slightly sort of oversized oversized legs with a little knee and just spreading out to being the hoof there, the hoof there. so a bit of a swelling out there And then up from the body, we'll have them sort of looking up a little bit. So the neck and then our sort of oval shape. I keep saying oval, it's not an oval, it's a, it's a, it's a U shape. It's funny, isn't it? You just get um, words stuck in your head that don't really make much sense. And he's looking up a bit more so his nose will be just a little bit higher on the face and there we go and then the eyes more slightly suspicious shifty looking eyes but that is great for our drawing and yet again what we do is we just rub out the basic pencil and if you want you might see another leg in behind there but not sort of necessarily okay I'm going to draw one more and then we'll start painting when it comes to painting um, Obviously lambs are essentially white and it can be easier sometimes to paint around the white object. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a wash of a little field of grass. So I've got my size 12, my large Pro Art Connoisseur brush and I'm going to just sort of build up a rough sort of dampening of the paper around the sheep leaving lots of room because obviously we need something with a bit more control to get us into the nooks and crannies. Now you could absolutely use masking fluid, but um, you know me, I'm not the hugest fan of relying on masking fluid too much. So uh, I like to try and teach you using as few bits of kit as possible. So we've now got a much smaller brush and what I'm going to do like I could just sort of paint water in here, but actually that's a sort of like pointless exercise. What you should do is start introducing your color. So I've got a few greens woken up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to introduce them in around the lambs. And because we've already wetted an area sort of quite close to the lambs, it means that we can sort of get that wash spread out really nice and easily. Um, now I've got a size zero brush here which seems ludicrously small for washes but it's just for that little bit of uh, detail right in and around the edge there. I'm using a combination of green gold and sap green but what happens when you suddenly hit the the watery edge is it's just going to give you a lovely soft outline not outline even just a soft blend into the wider space of the piece and it means we can create a sort of larger wash much more easily with far less chance of getting those sort of harsh lines that happen once you have hit a dry page 
So we're going to work fairly swiftly, but don't rush because that's where you might suddenly end up getting a bit of green on your, on your, on your lamb where you don't want it. But the great thing about placing in that large amount of water, there you go, you can see there, first off, is it's going to remain damp on the page for the time it takes to paint in the rest of the uh, slightly more close-up wash around the edge of the lamb. I'm now in the process of adding a, a more uh, concentrated bit of sap green down in the areas of under the feet, which is also the, the foreground of the grass. Oh, I don't believe it. I can hear the rain falling. Ah, we have had a ridiculously wet March. And the whole idea is that you're okay with that because the beginning of March is meant to be terrible weather and by the end, you're meant to come out the other side with glori glorious spring sunshine and it just hasn't quite happened like that. Okay, here's some Payne's Grey. We'll get that in there too. We'll also be adding in some um, grass, you know, little grass tufts and things. Later on, but for now, I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking. It's just a nice, slightly different technique of um, painting in your shapes. And it's all definitely starting to gradually dry now. But yeah, happy with that. Okay, so we're going to let that dry 100% and then we can come in and finish off by painting in the lambs. For the woolly coats of the sheep, I can hear them bleating in the field. Um, I've got buff titanium, yellow ochre, raw umber, then a bit of burnt sienna and Payne's grey is going to be very useful because although they are white, that means we're gonna pick up loads and loads of reflection from the surrounding environment. And also they are a sort of creamy, like a warm creamy gray color. So moon glow might be good as well. I think I'm going to mix up some burnt sienna into my Payne's gray to make a little shadowy, a shadowy warm gray. That's rather nice. And everything is going to be quite dilute. So I'm going to begin with some uh, buff titanium and I've got a size zero brush here and I'm going to sort of dab in the color along the edges of the sheep and then use my wet brush to just draw the color in What's really good actually in the book is if you don't have buff titanium. Um, I also didn't have buff titanium when I wrote the book, so I've got really good mixes to help you create uh, basically the same kind of effects. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing about doing similar tutorials every now and at different times in my teaching career because I make new discoveries and also can can cater to people with different different sort of things in their palettes. So underneath the chin here, we're going to have a slightly more shadowy area, but I also want to make sure that I don't sort of put too much darkness down the leg because that's in the, the foreground. So just be mindful of how you build up your colors. And also remember that there can be areas where um, the light hits the, the wool so much that you could just leave certain bits unpainted or like here I've just got a completely clean wet brush and I'm just drawing the, the darker bottom edge up to the lighter top section. You also want to make sure if you, you paint one leg then let allow it to dry before you paint in its neighbouring leg.
we had um we had like an ice storm last week and ant was in here working i think he was editing videos and he said it was the most i mean it's kind of an amazing sound i don't know about you but i i do quite like it when i hear the rain coming down a little bit of a little more there we go slightly stronger shadowy mix there um but yeah it's, it's quite something to hear it when you're like okay i think the studio might blow away now might take off like in the wizard of oz but I think we're okay today. Just another another April shower. Um, use the circles or rounded shapes that you've already drawn in that even if you've rubbed them out a fair point, a fair way, you probably still can see them. And they're so useful for helping you see the sort of the hip bones and the joints and where the roundness of the body is. So I'm just going to enjoy filling in the wool, lots of dabbing with the brush, lots of texture and not too much colour because of course you also have your green surrounding which means even leaving it completely white we can see the sheep, uh, see the lamb stand out. So experiment with your colours and just see, you'll be pleasantly surprised that you don't need much at all. I'm just working my way down the lamb's leg here and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just highlight um, the really lovely sort of knobbly knees they have and so I'm just bringing in quite a lot of shadow underneath the knobbly knee and leaving the area above it pretty much unpainted. So you can see that even though they are largely white wool or an off-white wool, there's a huge amount of colour that can be put into them to get that texture and the light and shade. So we've got the bodies largely painted in and now the faces so there's a, a hint of pink in the ears so I've got some permanent rose here but I'm going to add it add a little bit of yellow ochre in and just pop a little bit of that in I'm still using my size zero brush very happily. Um, and now for the faces, they are probably less textured and um, contoured in terms of like, well, there's a little, there's less texture. The, the wool is much sort of lighter and thinner. So I'm going to use buff titanium to begin with just an, and to paint it in just that little bit more smoothly. There's a little bit of dash but not quite so much. So just painting in either side of the the eyes and then so we've got essentially a bit of unpainted space down the middle. I'm slightly blending in those ears. It's very subtle, but it's just doing a little bit. I've put the finishing touches on this one so that I can now show you how to do it on the other ones. So the first thing is to get some really dilute of this sort of brown mix and we're going to begin to create the sort of subtle shadows and contours on the faces so around the the eye sockets they've got these little sort of little sort of slight lumpy bits on the where sort of eyebrows might be um, and just 
with the ears, starting to get that bit of shadow. And then a tiny bit of moon glow, quite diluted, just in the, around the muzzle area. Obviously different species of sheep, different breeds will have slightly different markings and things so you can play around with that and then while we're waiting for that we'll just a bit of moon go slightly more concentrated going to paint in the little hoof markings and just a little bit more texture on the shadowy bits because I've noticed there's very much a almost like a woolly jumper feel <laughs> to these these markings on the wool um, it sort of comes in in rings on the body and a bit of that moon glow just getting a little bit more shadow up on the face there. It's just all about going in very slow increments until it's dry and then we can add in the black. So I'll do the texture on this one and then we'll put in the final detail. Okay here's some some black, some ivory black and I'm going to paint in that and that there, then the little curve of the eye, Then I'm going to clean my brush off and I just want to just soften that by bleeding and blending it just a little bit. Okay, so this is looking really nice. All that's left is to pop in a bit of grass around the bottom. So we need some slightly more concentrated colour here. And I've got a hair on my brush. And we'll get a bit of Payne's Grey. Do you know what? Since we've moved out to the office and Crumble doesn't really like coming in here very much, I've had far fewer hairs in my palette. So obviously we love Crumble and we miss him not sort of padding about in the office. Uh, but it's no bad thing for the state of my watercolour palettes. Okay, so here we go. So let's begin with sort of grasses around the feet to help plant them and then I clean off my brush and I might actually get a size 2 brush for this. With a clean wet brush I just want to soften the bottom of where that grass is growing and we'll get a little bit of the Payne's Grey mixed in with the sap green here as well. And I want to put some just sort of in underneath because I want to in, enhance that sense of the shadow. Underneath it and then I could take some of this darker grass and place a little bit of that in as well and then just a few little sort of tufts here and there I think it's I quite like finding slightly darker areas of the wash to place in a few tufts of grass 
but I do think it helps if you just then take a clean wet brush and just soften them a little bit into the piece. So I let it dry and then I rubbed out the pencil just leaving these lovely fluffy spring lambs. So there is your painting for today. I really hope you enjoyed that and of course if you want more animal painting tutorials you can find plenty in my books, A Year of Watercolour and Birds, Bees and Blossoms, my second book, but this has a real range of plants, animals, birds and insects um, all through the seasons which is lovely and you can get signed copies only in my Etsy and website shop. Um, if you want details and links just head down to the episode notes but um, don't forget to comment let me know how you got on with that one and like the video and subscribe it makes all the difference to making our videos more visible to all the people who we want to see them. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye!